one's going to be a little bit more of a floating scenario so if he's already turned to you. So you might have passed, you might have done a standing pass, you might be coming into here, you might be trying to opt into here. But as we know, we don't have just one beefcake in here, we have two. So if he pushes those bosoms together, it creates a nice solid frame right there. I'm going to be having a hard time, right? So a lot of times you'll be doing what we're training to do, right? Killing these positions, all that good stuff. So sometimes you're gonna end up in kind of this like floating position here where you're putting enough pressure where he's not fully engaging here, but he's got his knees kind of folded to you. So of course here we really like cradle system stuff here. This is gonna be kind of a floating cradle, okay? So right now, for now, I'm gonna take two shovel hands. This hand's gonna come here and then I'm gonna weave it back into here. It's one of my favorite ways to push a guy back into side controls. I just hit a cross face and I weave my hand back into here and I get into this position. But sometimes I like to attack from here too. So I'll just pop this right here. And then instead of coming under to the cross face, I'll come over. And again, if he leaves his hand here kind of open, which I'm kind of betting on that he's going to be a little more aggressive with the bottom hand, I'm going to weave my hand in and I'm going to get my shovel hand right under this massive tricep here. So I'm going to go right into this position here, nice and tight. Now I'm going to try to bait him to get this hand framing in. So I'm going to push on him. A lot of times guys will bring their hands up, either the frame on my hip or start hand fighting. I'm right? going to pull this away and strip that out. That's kind of what I want. So I'm here, he pulls that hand in. See how, look how deep his elbow is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this inside knee in. I'm going to press it here. I'm going to hand it off to the head, set, head side hand and I'm going to cut this tricep. So it's going to look something like this. So he's framing. Okay, he's going here, he's going, boom, catch it. And I'm going to bring this knee up, boom, I'm just going to catch it here. So now he tries to pull this knee elbow out, it's a lot harder to get out. I'm going to pass it off, I'm going to lift this leg up, and then come to the, under the hip, I'm going to walk it out, boom, 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 and I'm going to pull. Okay, it's a one arm, arm triangle. Okay, a lot of people, some people call it the red. Okay, it's basically a one arm, arm triangle. What I'm trying to do is use this arm, for it, this forearm right under, and I'm attacking the bottom side artery. This hand is pulling this across into his other artery here. Now, when we were doing this earlier, some people will put their hand over here. I can probably finish it, but the problem is to kill the pressure on this, all he has to do is walk his knees towards me and kill that position, get those knees in, right? So we want to bring our hand to the opposite side, make sure he can't do that. What I also like doing is giving him a, a chiropractic adjustment. I'm trying to twist him this way, okay? At the same time as I'm doing all that, I'm not pulling him. I'm really not. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pack his elbow here like a football, and I'm trying to roll my hand to my hip as I sprawl onto the tricep, not the tilt. If I go too high, boom, there's no pressure, right? If I go too high, even if I get this up here, I'm not really getting it, that's a struggle, okay? So what I wanna do is get my chest right here where the delt meets the tricep, okay? So I'm here and I'm here, I get this position here, and I sprawl and roll. Does that make sense? You okay? You wanna see on something else? Yes, please. Okay, so again, I kinda of caught him in this nebulous kind of framing type position. So I'm gonna get my double shovel hands. Boom, and I'm gonna try to bait him. Sometimes if you won't do it, I'll give him a little chin tickle as if I'm going for uh, a chin strap. Oh, he gave me his wrist. See how he's giving me his wrist? So that's when I go here, punch, I drive my knee into his chest, okay? Now as I do that, I hand it off, drive, get my hand on his base, and I'm gonna kick out and row. So a lot, a lot of things can happen right here. Let's say I'm fighting here. So a lot of times what will happen is they'll stall the hands and they'll start trying to come up to their knees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive my hand through. Come up, drive them back down, scroll. Okay, so it's an early catch. All right, so I'm gonna go real slow. As slow as it is for it took me to understand, which is pretty slow. All right, so. I'm here, I start working here. He's not letting me have it. So I'm just gonna punch my hand through, and my hand comes here. I'm gonna push forward, 
and then I'm going to sprawl and I'm going to bring my elbows together. So a trick that I found for people, it doesn't really matter that I found if you get the darts here or here, okay? What matters is I get my elbows together and I expand my chest, okay? Um, I've had a student before karate chop here and break their own hand. <laughs> okay. So the other thing I want to try to do is get my hand as deep as I can. And I want to have a nice little shovel scoop. Bang. Here or here. The trick is to bring the elbows together and expand my chest and bring his chin to his chest, right? His center line. It's no, it's no different than the concept of choking someone with a rear naked chin. Okay, I want to bring my elbows together. I want to expand my chest. And I want to bring his chin down to the center line. Okay, I, uh, you need to see on someone else. All right, so one more time. I'm, I'm fighting for this. He said no. I'm going to punch this through. And it comes up. See how I can actually cut that hand and bring it back down? Right here, and here, or I'm here. Okay, I'm going to expand my chest and bring my elbows together. Okay. Boom, boom. There's a couple other things you can do to kind of manage it, but what I found, um, can I borrow Diego real quick? Because I made a point of this. The other thing I found when I'm working for this position here, a lot of times people get this up and then their head pops out. What I'm trying to do is I like to just slide, as I'm punching this through, I just slide my tricep on the top of the crown of his head. Boom, now that helps me sprawl that in, okay? It's just like what we learned with the collar tie, which is if I'm collar tie, go ahead and sit up real quick. I'm trying to collar tie him down here, and he fights me, I'm fighting his whole body. If I get my elbow here, and I create a fulcrum and lever point, I can roll his head down. It's kind of the same thing if I can hit this here. Okay, so one more time. So I'm here, I'm fighting for the one arm. He's framing, he might come up, boom. Here, walk him back. Okay, any questions? All three, one, two, three. So I've gone for this, he starts, going to his knees, right? And I start having troubles here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push his head down. And I'm gonna come here, okay? Boop, boop. I'm gonna drive forward and walk him down, okay? So now we can start over. I don't, I might have lost the submission chain, but I'm now I have gotten to a stronger position. And if I'm lucky, I can trap that arm on the other side, on the near side position. <clears throat> so again, down here, boom, this starts coming up. Boom, notice he's already too high for me to catch. So where does my hand go? At the crown of the head, you see that? I'm gonna drive this over and I'm gonna pull, I'm straining it on, I'm gonna pull his chin to his chest. You see how he's following down? As he's doing that, when I feel the pull working, <clears throat> I'm gonna pull a vanilla gorilla by the journal. And I'm gonna put the knee, or my knuckles down as I do that. So I just come here, knuckles down, hand comes around, and I walk the gap. So I've missed the first one. I start going for second. He's like, no. So I drive that down. Boom, knuckle down. Okay, call this bulldog cradle, right? Okay, so I should end, hopefully, with the arm trapped. And I'm right here, just sitting like a bulldog, okay? So I'm here. I mess this up. He starts coming up. I miss my opportunity. Boom. So you see how sometimes we'll be able to uh, mad dog that down. Boom. Here, dry, boom, okay, look up, check for people, <laughs> wait for the ref, ref, oh, you're just gonna, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 I was expecting the three count and everybody else is like, <laughs> couple points of advice. Yep, yep, yeah, and that's, I really like this, uh, I like this transition, uh, transition a lot. I actually had to use this for a self-defense setup, this last one. I did it from more of a tackle though. Someone went for my legs here, and I was like working, working, working here. So there's a lot of ways you can use that. Any questions on that? Let's see it one more time, just so you can see it twice. Okay, so I'm here. Boom, I start through this position. I go here, he starts coming up. Oh no, boom. 
Okay. I'm going to drive forward, knuckle dust to the ground, turn the corner. Any questions? Thank God. On three. One, two, three.